Hey there friends, so let's talk about writing an opinion, perspective, viewpoint and commentary paper. I gotta admit as a disclosure right at the beginning, I love these papers very much. I love reading them because they're very stimulating and they make you think about stuff, but I also really like writing them. In this video I'll explain a little bit about what they are, when to write them, what the advantages are of having written one uh, for yourself and also for the field. And let's get started. Now one of the things that I have always discussions with people in the lab about is that people think that writing such opinion viewpoint perspective papers is more the remit of a senior scientist of somebody with a lot of experience in that field that has like that kind of level of overview so they can have an opinion, you know, because something that I often get is, uh, let, let's say from um, PhD students or from um, postdocs, is like, well, who will care about my opinion, right? I am just X, Y, Z and I don't have a huge standing in the field. But of course you should understand that the opinion paper is not just you having an opinion, like you having an opinion when you meet with your friends, but an opinion paper is a scientific output. It's a well-founded argument that you're unfolding. It's a piece of academic work. It's not just writing down what you think about something. Yeah? So this is the first thing and it is definitely not true that this is just something for senior scientists to do. Even though of course they will have an advantage because they have a long-term overview of a certain field and can see how a particular area will develop. This is true, undeniably, but anybody with a great idea can write an opinion, perspective and viewpoint paper. So that's very, very important to realize from the very beginning. So what are these papers? So they are not primary literature, so there is no data collected for them that is then presented in the typical format that you're familiar with, but they are also not full review papers in the sense of a systematic review or something, a full review of the literature. They are somewhere in between. They're therefore a different category of papers. And um, not every journal offers this kind of paper type. Um, you have to check in the instruction for authors if your particular target journal offers this and also what it's called because they're always called something different even though they kind of mean the same. You know, perspective, opinion, viewpoint paper, sometimes commentary paper. And they all kind of mean the same. Sometimes a journal also offers different ones and then there is a slight difference in meaning attached to them, but it's highly subjective and um, highly particular to how the journal handles these things. So it's important to look in the instruction for authors for this particular article types to, to make sure that your idea is a fit for that particular journal and article type. Now these are typically peer-reviewed products. So just like a primary literature paper or review that will be sent out to reviewers and you will get the opportunity to revise them. They can also be rejected of course and frequently are. Um, but it is basically the same. There's few exceptions where they're actually not in fact fully peer-reviewed but they're just looked at by the editorial office but this is rather more unusual, I'd say, in our field. Now, what does such a paper do? It can do all kinds of different things. One thing is you can identify a gap in the literature where, for example, in one particular field, let's say in aquatic ecology, something has already been done, but it's not been done in terrestrial ecology, for example. And you can say, well, this is a huge gap in um, our knowledge and this should be tackled in future work. This is sort of the classical identifying a big gap kind of um, purpose of an opinion paper. You could also highlight recent developments in another field like in some molecular field for example and say like well, this could be highly relevant for us let's say in ecology or something like this or vice versa. So basically say well you should be aware of this being uh, developed in this particular field. This could be really useful we should be paying attention to it. It's another example. Or you could present a new hypothesis or a new concept and basically start a particular line of inquiry in your field. Another purpose could be to provide an overview of a particular research field, how it's been developing and what future developments could be like and where the field should be moving. So more like a trend setting kind of paper. And finally, there's many opportunities more in the realm of policy where you could say, well, this is a policy relevant topic or policy is currently moving in this direction and we need to supply these uh, research results to underpin that policy. But there's also many more, but I think you get the general idea what some of the purposes could be. 
Uh, when to write an opinion paper? Well, I think the most important thing in about an opinion paper is that it develops a novel idea and it should be novel and innovative and should not be just an incremental development, but it should be a major development, basically. So the, pap the point in the development of a particular line of research when to write such an opinion paper is typically uh, towards the beginning of, a, of at least a development in that field. Because if there is already a lot of data available on a particular question, what you can do is just write a review paper or you can do a formal analysis of the results in the form of, of a meta-analysis. So an opinion paper is typically positioned more in the beginning of the development of a particular research field. This is when you would write it. What are the advantages for you? Well, I think the very clear advantage is that it is scientific productivity. It's productivity that's also independent of experiments and other empirical studies, which are often prone to failure. So in a way, it can also be a bit of a thesis insurance if you're a PhD student, or it can ensure continuous output uh, when you're a postdoc and you're in a compressed time frame and you have to show productivity. So in these circumstances, they can really help you a lot. Now, when these papers show up in your publication record, they can also showcase your creativity. They can show how you can you know, have an overview of your research field and that you have a vision for where this might be going and that you actually have new ideas. And that is not to be underestimated, basically, when you apply for a next position or an academic job. Another important purpose is, of course, that you can establish the origin of an idea. You can say like, well, here's this idea, here's the concept, I lay it out, here's the supporting information, and this can basically serve as the starting point of a line of inquiry. And it can, you can mark this uh, starting point basically with your name. And depending on your particular rules for your PhD, this can, for example, also form uh, the basis for a thesis or dissertation chapter. This you have to discuss and check out in your local rules, but it basically can supplement also empirical work. And that is also a very important thing to consider, especially early on in your career. Now, what are the advantages for the field? Uh, of course, uh, of course, are also advantages for the field as a whole. And one is that an idea basically gets out fast. And then once it's been published, other people can read it, other people can act on it, and they can basically design experiments that pursue this particular idea that has been proposed or refuted, right? So I mean, but basically the point is a discourse is being started, a discussion is being started on this particular idea that you have put forth or this concept hypothesis or whatever point it was of your opinion paper, now this can be um, engaged with by the scientific community as a whole. And so it has the purpose of moving things forward faster rather than having to wait for like a study having been designed and experiments having been collected, which could you know, mean years <laughs> of delay until an idea gets out. And these opinion papers, and this is something I wouldn't underestimate either, are very often fairly short and accessible and easily digestible pieces of information that serve also as an entry point for a particular field rather than a full review or a book or a book chapter. They're very compressed pieces of information that are easily digestible. Now, I hope that gave you sort of an idea of what an opinion viewpoint perspective commentary viewpoint paper is. And I think that they're very important. They serve an important function in the, well, in the publishing landscape and in the scientific process and also in your career, potentially, depending on your field. And so I think it's very important for you to consider, could you write? one of these papers. And with that, good luck, <laughs> thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.